to the Sweet 16 in 2019. That was a win for the Boilermakers. We'll see how it plays out here in Honolulu today with the first of two semifinals coming your way. Opening tap controlled by Purdue. And this is Smith, a member of the Big Ten All-Freshman team a year ago, and at the early part of the season, Jay, is any indication, he's gotten even better in the sophomore season. Well, immediately, Purdue is looking to try to establish Zach Eady in the middle of the floor, set a little down screen so he get position. They're just trying to get to the right angle. If you watch Tennessee, you know they can really guard. They were number one in the country for Ken Palm and adjusted defensive efficiency a year ago. Fletcher Lawyer with a three and the first basket of the game. And Fletcher Lawyer needed that one. He went 0 of 6 in the game against Gonzaga, had some turnovers for him to knock down his first one. Purdue's got to knock down open shots around Zach Eady because they're going to get some. Braden Smith diving for the loose ball, a little bit slow to get up and shaken up. As Jemai Meshack knocks it down for Tennessee. And Smith reaching up to his right eye and says he's okay. And the officials checking on him and play will continue. Let's take a look. And yeah, he took a shot from the left hand of Jemai Meshack. And that obviously kept him out of the play, allowed Meshack to get into the lane. Meshack's going to be a really important player. His defense is excellent. He's guarding one of the best pick and roll read guards in Braden Smith. A touch for Edie up top, the handoff back to Lawyer, he'll drive it and draw the foul. Lawyer taking that handoff again in the middle of the floor and able to turn the corner and get downhill. There's got to be a little bit of help there from Jonas Adu, who's guarding Zach Edie. Edie's not going to drive that ball, he's got to step out and make it more difficult for Lawyer to turn the corner. Lawyer, the sophomore from Fort Wayne, Indiana, a check after the game against Syracuse. Rick Barnes told Dalton Connect he wants him to do more of those back downs because he's got a big body, he can score in there, and he draws defensive attention, can pass out of it. Lawyer inside for Edie. He gets swarmed immediately. Lawyer with a runner, and it'll go. Now you saw Jemai Meshack playing point guard essentially for Tennessee in there guarding Zach Edie. And that's intentional. One, he's a really good defender, but Rick Barnes, he remembers LaMarcus Aldridge telling me when, when little guys were on me and got into my legs, I hated that. And he also studied what Fairleigh Dickinson did to Zach Eady last year in the tournament. Santiago Vescovi wide open and misses a three. A terrific shooter. He had a very nice all-round game for the balls yesterday in their win over Syracuse. Smith turns the corner, too strong off the window, and down with the rebound, the fifth-year senior, Josiah Jordan-James. Connect with a deep one, count it. And again, if this is your first time seeing the balls, he's a transfer. They had trouble scoring the ball last year. He is alleviating a lot of that trouble right now. After that little handoff from Josiah Jordan-James, I think Lance Jones thought he had some room there and could recover, but Connect got that up so quickly. Edie with the rebound, surrounded and fouled. Take a look at Dalton Connect just backing down the smaller Lance Jones into the paint, draws a double team, and is able to pass right over it to the cutting Jemai Meshack. And you go underneath any exchange, and he's going to get that ball up in a hurry. He's got a very quick and high release and really deep range. So Edie at the line now for Purdue, yet to attempt a field goal in this game through the first three minutes, but at the line right now. A good free throw shooter in spite of that miss on the first one. And Jay, he is averaging 10 free throw attempts per game because he gets fouled about as much as anybody. And here is Tobey Awaka, who rolled that ankle yesterday, but he is back in the game here today. Awaka not as tall as Jonas Adu and doesn't shoot it as well from the perimeter, but he is an excellent offensive rebounder. Well, you don't see Edie miss both very often. Trey Kaufman ran with the offensive rebound. Deflected off the backboard and now to Tennessee. Looks like a walker got a hand on that one. And so far, Purdue having trouble getting Edie the ball down on the block. Meshack goes by him. James cut off on the baseline. Good defense. Purdue's matchup's not what they want, but they're making it work. 
Boy, what a job by Fletcher Lawyer to stay in front of Dalton today. That was a great defensive possession there for the Boilermakers. They couldn't, they didn't have one matchup that they would have wanted there. Lance Jones cut off on the baseline, finds Lawyer, and Kaufman ran over the back. Well, you had Zach Eady guard, guarding Jemai Meshack down the floor, and after establishing legal guarding position, two feet on the floor facing the ball handler, Fletcher Lawyer maintained that. Didn't get a charge, but got a turnover. Really good defense by Fletcher Lawyer. Two teams who felt last year they were Final Four contenders, and two teams who certainly feel that way about their prospects this year. So a great early season test. Connect too strong, and Kaufman ran the rebound. And so far, Purdue doing a good job on the defensive glass. Great Kaufman ran right there, as with as was Zach Eady. Now a touch for Edie. Up and in, and Purdue has the lead. They did a great job of feeling where Waka was, and just a little drop step to get to that right shoulder right by the basket. You give him an angle there, he gets two feet in the paint. It's it's basically over. You have to let him score a foul. Edie coming into this game, averaging about 22 and 11 on the young season as Josiah Jordan James knocks one down from beyond the arc. Excellent penetration, and that penetration wasn't to finish. It was to draw the defense, and Josiah Jordan James was really good against Syracuse. Had a double-double, a couple of blocks to go on with 15 points and 12 rebounds. He's pain-free. Edie again. James got a piece of it, and then Connect got a piece of Edie. So he'll be called for the foul, and Edie will be back at the free throw line when we come back. He draws a crowd, doesn't he? He sure does. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Allstate. You know the talent they've got. They've got just about everybody back from last year, and then they've added a transfer in Lance Jones. They've added a terrific-looking freshman in Miles Colvin, and also Camden Heidi is healthy this year. They're a deeper team than they were a year ago. They're deeper. They're more athletic on the wings, and, and overall, I think they're a better team this year than they were last year. And look... There's no denying what happened against Fairleigh Dickinson last year and in the two years prior It's three years in a row that Purdue has lost to a double-digit seed in the NCAA tournament it wasn't all in the first round But that's something they're gonna have to deal with at the end of the year that, That's not a factor right now. This team's as good as anybody Meanwhile Edie who's a very good free throw shooter in the, in the mid 70s last year better than that of the young season this year He's 0 for 4 from the line, oddly enough, so far in this one. Yeah, I think he'll be okay. He's going to continue to get yeah. fouled. But, you know, you mentioned his mobility. And Angel Gray as well brought it up. Where it really shows up is, one, recovering when he sets a ball screen and rolling. But it shows up in his ball screen defense as it's really yeah. improved. Mason Gillis can't get the shot off. Shot clock's running down. Good if it goes, and it goes for Fletcher Lawyer, who's off to a really good start today. And Rick Barnes wanted three seconds called on Mason Gillis. He was in there for a while, and both Rick and his staff were up yelling for it, didn't get it. Dalton connects with the three, the assist to Zakai Ziegler. That is one aptly named player, Connect. Yes. Because it seems like every time he gets some space, and a little bit of time to get a shot on especially with the speed set that thing's good but he can make contested shots average 20 a game for northern colorado last year he's a a, a fifth year senior a transfer and he's at 19 a game so far this year and there he is skying for the rebound that was a great offensive rebound by mason gillis i thought that fletcher lawyer was gonna take that three but jordan ganey ran him off the three-point line and made him take a a dribble, one dribble, two-point shot. That was a good job by Ganey just to take that three away from Lawyer. I thought he should have shot it anyway. That was a better shot for him. So, Connect going to the line. You talked about this a little bit yesterday in the Tennessee win over Syracuse, but here is a great example um, with the new rule, with the new transfer rules of a guy who is, quote-unquote, transferring up. A guy who's maybe better now than people thought he would be a few years ago when he gets to finish his college career at the highest level. Well, for both Jordan Ganey went to South Carolina Upstate, played for Dave Dickerson there, for Dalton Connect. You know, they, they've been conditioned to be stars. And both of them have seen every defense in the book thrown at them. You know, they've been double teamed. They've seen box and one, triangle two, you name it, trying to stop them. So they didn't come in here as role players. They came in to be stars. Right. And, and both of them are capable of doing that. Connect 
uh, has shown himself to be a star. And absent the game yesterday, Jordan Ganey did not play well. He only had two points against Syracuse, went one for seven. But he's legit. That that one he made was a, that left-handed dunk. Are you kidding me? That thing was unreal. Let's keep an eye on this end of the floor now. A freshman, J.P. Estrella, is in trying to defend Zach Eady. As Awaka and Eady were both on the bench at the moment. Ziegler helping out with a double team. Gillis for three. And so much of Purdue at times can be when they double and triple Edy to the guys who were open to make outside shots. That's exactly right. That, that's going to be very important all year long for this team. Making open shots. Estrella underneath and turns it over. Estrella gave some really good minutes against Syracuse, and he's in there just to battle Edy for a few minutes. 6'11, 240. But Edie's 7-4, 300. But Gillis delivered a tremendous back screen there. Just couldn't finish the play. Ganey with a clean look from deep. And we got all kinds of tangled up underneath. And did they get Lawyer? No, nope, they got Estrella, Tennessee. Both teams, all the players on the floor were looking at the official Randy McCall. Not sure which way it's going to go. And it goes on Estrella. Estrella's got a big body. He just was getting boxed out, just put a little bit too much into it. He's probably looking at the official going, hey, wait a minute. Uh, punish me because I'm stronger? That's a guard. He can't block me out. But Purdue has, has been active on the offensive glass. They have four offensive rebounds, but they've not converted on any of those. No second-chance points, even though they've grabbed rebounds. Edy has gone to the bench. Caleb first is in for the first time today. He and Coffin Red up front. Cam Heidi has checked it as well. Hoffman Red, good in the post. Good patience in the paint, and he draws the foul. We saw him do that exact move three or four times yesterday against Gonzaga. He'll face up. He's got a very good jump hook. He likes to get into the middle of the lane. Got a little up and under move. He's very good in the post. He caught it a step off, but just faced up Estrella. And uses shot fakes, pivots to pick up that foul. Great doubleheader tomorrow night on ESPN, an NBA doubleheader that starts off with Giannis of the Bucks taking on Jason Tatum and the Celtics, and then KD and the Suns against Steph Curry and the Warriors. Coverage tips with NBA countdown at 70 Street. Purdue's free throw, the, excuse me, Tennessee's free throw defense has been excellent. Yes, they're, they're not giving uh, up anything at the line. They're defending the free throws at 75% right now. Purdue is just two for eight from the line, leaving some points there. Underrated talking point free throw defense, isn't it? It is. <laughs> <laughs> Jonas Adu off to Santiago Vescovi. This is the three, and Kaufman Wren secures the rebound. How about Lance Jones? What does he bring to Purdue? He brings speed, athleticism. He's an excellent defensive player. He can be a defensive stopper. But his speed in the second half and transition ability made a big difference in the ball game that they played. Hoffman Wren working hard, can't finish, and here comes Ziegler in the balls. And Purdue just took off on Gonzaga in that second half, and a lot of it was the pace at which they played in the second half. Great pass. Adu got caught under the rim, but he got fouled. And he will be at the free throw line when we come back. Three work there haven't been allowed back in yet because it's still a dangerous area. Uh, there's remediation going on. It's going to be a long, long process, uh, not only for healing, but for rebuilding. And while we're talking about resilience and Maui Strong, all that's true. But it's going to be a long time. And, and it, it is going to take a ton of effort and a ton of support. And for all those who can help support the people of Maui and Lahaina, uh, we would encourage everyone to do so if they can. 3,000 structures burned to the ground, basically in the fire, and uh, the last published report had 99 people, very sadly, tragically, perishing in the fire. Angel Gray has more. Guys, for the Maui Invitational and the Hawaiian Airlines partner together to bring a couple of the displaced residents to the early session games, and I was really moved hearing from one of the residents, Talia Tua, brought her son as well to the game. She said she had a home on Front Street. She lost everything, but the things that were in her shed, she said she was able to come here with a open heart 
and this has brought her a lot of joy. She said this brings relief, brings some sense of joy to her as well. And her son, who plays basketball at Lahaina Luna High School, he told me he dreamed of becoming a mechanic, but now wants to become a carpenter so he can come back and help rebuild his community. That's a wonderful gesture by that young man. And again, organizers hope the tournament can be back in Maui next year. Purdue in transition. Jones and Connect with a block. No foul call. It'll stare down from Connect as well in the aftermath of the play. And I think Randy McCall is saying, keep it right there. Don't need any of that. It was a great block after a tremendous defensive sequence from Purdue on the other end. They just didn't finish it with a defensive rebound. But what a fabulous block by Dalton Connect. Oh, I didn't think he did anything wrong. He just looked down. He didn't stare anybody down. I think somebody, maybe Lance Jones, might have a cut. He might be bleeding, so looks like it was hopefully very minor. He just grabbed a towel, and he's heading back into the game. And Zach Eady is back in the game as well, Jay. He was only out for about two minutes of game time. Part of that was on either side of the under-12 timeout, so he got some rest. But we talked about it yesterday. Big guys don't play as many minutes normally as Zach Eady is playing. That's, that's because too many coaches were guards. You're, big, st you're still bitter, aren't Big you? guys should play more. <laughs> it's not that they can't do it. He's averaging about 28 minutes per game, and he's easily capable of playing 32 to 34 minutes. As Adu, who can step out and knocks one down, does just that, and the lead grows for the Vols. And that's a big bucket for the Vols, because when Trey Kaufman Wren was in there, he could hedge a ball screen and recover. But you're seeing Zach Eady play drop coverage. He's playing off that ball screen. And you can pick and pop and get to the three-point line. He's not going to recover out to that. Tough shot for Jones and the rebound for Connect. And Purdue has gone ice cold offensively. Connect into the paint. Puts the brakes on. Kicks it out to Ganey. He got, looked like he got touched there. Maybe not hit. I think it affected him. Yeah, and a foul going against Purdue as Vescovy was held. They got lawyer. Take a look at Jonas Adu. He sets that screen, and then he just pops out to the wing. And it's just a little bit slow for Zach Eady getting out of there. He's got to help on the drive because he's not up to touch and hedging. or They're showing on the ball screen. You know, that's called drop coverage, and there's no reason to have a 7-4 guy up top. You'd rather have him in drop coverage where he can recover to the basket a little bit easier. How but about Connect scoring over Edie off the inbounds, and it's a 9-0 run right now for Tennessee. Now remember, Purdue's missed a ton of free throws already in this game. It's not just their offense that's letting them down. You know, they've gotten fouled and haven't gotten anything out of them. Well, how about this? They're 25% from the field, 25% from three, 25% from the line. Not doing well anywhere right now. That's a real tough one. Edie somehow got a piece of it with one hand and draws the foul. Well, Jemai Meshach is doing such a good job on Fletcher Lawyer. He wouldn't let him get the ball. He was coming around for a handoff, and he blew the whole thing up. And then he just, he was looking at the screen instead of forcing Lawyer into the screen, which is what he should have done. But you see Adu is just, you know, trying to box out. And as soon as Edie jumps, just physics, he's going to, he's going to have to foul him now. Wow. This is really baffling. Again, he is a good free throw shooter. He came into the game today 33 for 40, 83 percent on the season. And he's 0 for 5 today. Hard to explain. Tough assignment for Caleb first, having to guard Dalton Connect out on the perimeter. Ganey into the paint, looks for some help. Almost turned it over. Meshack saves it. Vescovy with a shot fake, and then a foul called on Edie. Boy, it looked like Vescovy was using his off arm there to try to ward off Edie. Now, maybe Edie brought that arm down, but it looked like the original contact was started by Vescovy and created by him. Watch his off arm here. See, he's, that, that's not a foul on Edie. That's, that's offense created. That's a bad call. That is a bad call. 
And Vescovi shaken up for the moment. I don't know if it was the, the contact with Edie or the contact with the floor, but either way, the fifth-year senior is at the line from Uruguay. So it's one of the reasons he wanted to come back and use the COVID year, play the fifth year, was to finish off his degree. And how many coaches, Jay, have two guys who are both as experienced and as good as Santiago Vescovi and Josiah Jordan-James? Yeah, that's the key. There are a lot of guys that come back that are experienced but not as good. And how about that fake? His ball fake, shot fakes are just so effective. Even though you know it in the scouting report, so many really good defenders bite on it because it's such a, a tight and violent fake by Santiago Vescovi. Purdue hasn't scored in over five and a half minutes. This is as good a look as you're going to get, and it's in and out for Lawyer. Well, that was just some roll replace action. Everybody worried about Zach Eady. That left Fletcher Lawyer wide open up top. And Tobe Iwaka was just trying to string out that ball screen action. He did it for a couple of dribbles, but that makes the throwback to Lawyer so effective. Boy, when, when Zach Eady gets inside position, forget it. They're trying to keep the ball from going into him, so if you front him, how are you going to get back around and box him out? <laughs> and there's his first make on the front end of the one and one. And he'll smile about it. I mean, he was wearing that for a few minutes, but he's broken the ice here. Yeah, they don't look too worried about it. No, it's just. Yeah, it's not like he's not a very good free throw shooter. He's been making his free throws ever since he got to West Lafayette. I'd be more worried about those outfits. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Made them both. Passionate fans for the Boilermakers. The same can be said for the Vols. And don't forget Kansas and Marquette still to come in the second semifinal here at the All-State Maui Invitation. They do really doing a good job negotiating screens and exchanges. You see. Fletcher Lawyer trying to keep Vescovy away from that screen. So Kai Ziegler misses the three. Ziegler coming off the bench right now. The torn ACL at the end of February. And missed the preseason. He made his first appearance in the regular season opener. They're still building the minutes back up. Here's a good look. Good position for Edie. Can't finish it. Gillis with a terrific offensive rebound. And Mayshack with just as good of a block. And Mayshack is a great defender, isn't he? Lawyer lost it, got it back. Edie the follow. If Purdue this season can take good care of the ball and not turn it over, well, even if they miss a shot, they've got such a great opportunity for an offensive rebound. Just icing that ball screen on the right side. Meshack followed up his own miss on the weak side and lays it in. Uh, Purdue just not gang rebounding. All five guys need to go to the defensive glass for the Boilermakers, and Meshack taking advantage of it. Smith around the screen. A staggered ball screen up top. That's four around one now to Edie. And a Waka called for the reach around foul. Well, he had his right. Okay. What do you think North Carolina's in for this year? Well, they've got a lot of new pieces. And after last year and losing Caleb Love into the transfer portal, he's now at Arizona. You know, I expect R.J. Davis to have a, a, a big year, and Armando Bacot has already been dominant. You expect that. I mean, he's the all-time leader at North Carolina, double-doubles, the all-time leading rebounder. I think North Carolina's going to have a really good year. How about the big guys? Edie came back. Bacot came back. Dickinson transferred to Kansas. We'll see him in the second game. So many experienced, talented big guys in college basketball. All good for the game. Ziegler, no. And out of bounds to Purdue. Well, Purdue can't get it here because they're going to have to inbound the ball. But one thing I think Purdue needs to do is when they grab a defensive rebound, to try to get out and run a little bit more. Get some easy baskets in transition because grinding it out against Tennessee's half-court defense all game long, that is an exhausting proposition. Jay, only two Boilermakers have scored. Lawyers got nine. Edie's got eight. That's it. That was just not a good angle for the pass because even if Edie catches that, that pass is leading him to the baseline. We want to take one dribble over, pass it over. Watch where this pass comes in from. He's throwing it basically, I mean, look, it was offline anyway, but even if Edie catches it, where is it taking him? 
It's just not the right angle. And, you know, Purdue is much smarter than that, but they're playing against a team that's putting pressure on them and heating up the ball. It's difficult. Miles Colvin, freshman number five for Purdue, into the game. He was on connect. So he missed the jumper and down with the rebound in traffic is Lawyer. Opportunities here to run and pass ahead. Colvin made two threes in the win over the Zags yesterday. Edie with the rebound underneath, up and can't finish it, but he's fouled yet again. That's like the tenth offensive rebound for Purdue. Now they've missed a lot of shots, but they've earned some second shot opportunities. That's why you don't want to turn that ball over. But they need to look immediately off these ball screens that are there's a hard show and they're stringing it out a couple of dribbles. And after you throw back, look immediately into Zach Eady because he's going to be open. 18 missed shots, 10 offensive rebounds for Purdue. Zawaka goes to the bench. Estrella is back in. That's over a 50% offensive rebound. Wow, you weren't skipping class back at Duke. Yes, I was. Oh, sorry. <laughs> So how about Edie? He missed his first six from the line, and now he's made six in a row. It's really the offensive glass that's keeping Purdue within one possession here. Connect off the screen. Left-hand scoop up and good. A great read of the defense. His defender was trailing him. He just curled into the lane instead of just running out to the wing to catch a pass. That's really good cutting. And good read of the defense by Dalton Connect. He's got 11 already. Came in averaging 19. Gillis with a great fake. Almost had it knocked away. Lawyer for three. Edie again on the offensive glass. And Lawyer is fouled. Edie does such a good job. This looks like a technical foul here. Edie does such a good job of looking out to the three-point line after he grabs an offensive rebound. Rick Barnes is livid. He wants to play physical. And he is not happy that the officials are blowing the whistle so often on the orange uniform. He's saying, hey, Zach Eady's being awfully physical when he's going up for rebounds. So the technical on the bench and then the personal foul as well. So Lawyer is shooting the two technical free throws. And this has a chance to be a pretty productive trip for the Boilermakers. And Zach Eady, he's saying, Rick Barnes saying, hey, he's pushing my guy off. Like, what's Josiah Jordan James supposed to do there? So Barnes assessed a technical. Lawyer makes them both. And now Lawyer's at the line for the, the free throws on the personal. I wonder how often the Lawyer family had to buy new nets <laughs> when Foster and Fletcher yeah. were growing up. Two guys who could shoot. And their dad's a great basketball man. John Lawyer spent a lot of years in the NBA. Purdue's got more than half of its points at the free throw line now. 12 out of 23. Including their last eight. A little floppy action to try to get the ball to connect. Jordan Ganey, the transfer from USC Upstate. Tough turnaround and oh. hammered back home by what? Connect. Miles Coleman couldn't block him out. Dalton Connect with the left hand. And the tip dunk. He is a pro offensively. There is no doubt about that. One of the reasons he went to Tennessee was to get coached up hard on defense. But boy, has he filled it up offensively on the young season for the balls. Lawyer again. He's having himself a day. Well, he had 11 points against Xavier. A couple of steals. But was 0 of 6 against Gonzaga. He's seeing a big basket right now. Wow. Meshack was seeing a big basket on his way to the rim, but he missed on the dunk. I don't know what the foul was there. Edie was being held off by J.P. Estrella. And I didn't see anything there. Doesn't mean nothing happened. I just didn't see it. Now watch underneath the basket. Estrella is holding off Zach Edie. Yeah, maybe he maybe caught him in the chest there a little bit with his uh, right hand. 
It is on Edie, and it's his second. So with 4.17 to go in the half, Jay, Edie is coming out of the game. Purdue is not a high foul team. And Edie doesn't, doesn't pick up a ton of fouls. He's very disciplined defensively, uses his size, and moves his feet. Meshack, one of two, Tennessee with the lead. Tennessee with a little full court pressure here. How does this change things for Purdue at the offensive end with no Edie? Well, they're a little bit more mobile. But they can still post up Trey Kaufman Red. And a travel called on Gillis. Fourth turnover committed by the Boilermakers. And just a little bit too fast. They ran a little roll over place action. And I think Gillis wasn't thinking about shooting it like he was going to catch it and shot fake and make a play. Meshack into the paint. Too strong. And good job by Gillis to get a piece of it. And we have a Tennessee player, Jemai Meshack, down behind the play. And the officials blow the whistle. And now the Purdue guys have scored on one of the teams. Fletcher Lawyer's got 16. Zach Eady's got 10. Nobody else for Purdue has scored yet. Well, even though Seth Greenberg's right, make a free throw. Purdue has been making their free throws of late. They're 12 of 20. And Tennessee, 4 of 8. The free throw line has been a big factor in keeping... Purdue within striking distance in this one. Edie on the bench with two fouls. Kaufman ran in the post. Offensive rebound first. Oh, they do such a great job. Caleb first just wedged Josiah Jordan James underneath. Great cut. But then Smith throws it out of bounds. Boy, he had the right idea, but he misfired. Now, Braden Smith doesn't make many mistakes. I mean, he may be undersized he's only six feet tall but he's got the wingspan of a six five guard and he uses it good battle right now between smith and zakai ziegler at the point and out of bounds vescovy looked like he was trying to get a foul called as much as he was focusing on handling the basketball yeah just curled a little fade screen there on the left side and he was trying to give a little head fake while he was dribbling. Just lost control of the ball with the left hand. He's left-handed. And now a steal by Ziegler. Boy, what a job by Lance Jones to stay in front. It won't go for Vescovy. Kaufman Wren down for the rebound for Purdue. And a really good block out by Trey Kaufman Wren. Good ball pressure by Vescovy. He's just extending the catch. Jones gets by him. The kick. Good recovery, though, by the Bulls. Good pass. Lawyer. Not this time. And another rebound for Connect. Didn't get that shot to go down. But that ball was really moving. Transition three. Not there for Ziegler. And both teams struggling offensively. Getting some pretty good looks. Just not making them. What a pass. And a foul. Boy, great vision there by Smith. There's just a little ball screen by first, and then Fletcher Lawyer set a back pick. So watch first, set the screen, then watch number two. Fletcher Lawyer just sets a back pick on Josiah Jordan James, picks him off just a little bit, and a beautiful thread of the needle right to Caleb first. Had no choice but to foul him. First, the guy was a part-time starter last year. Mason Gillis started some, first started some. Kaufman Wren is starting in that spot right now for Purdue. And you can feel, Jay, with this deeper roster that Matt Painter has this year, that he's still trying to sort through the rotation a little bit in this early part of the season. Well, he's got a lot of options, and there are a lot of guys that are worthy of playing extended minutes. But it's really difficult to play 10 guys every game because then you're taking your, your core guys and maybe not playing them as much. And unless you're going to platoon like John Calipari did in 2015, you know, it's just difficult to do. Vescovy finds Ziegler. Still six to shoot. Freshman Cade Phillips into the game. Couldn't handle the pass, and it's back to the Boilermakers. 
And we got contact between Phillips and first, and the foul is going against Purdue. That is the second on first. The first one after that ball with both hands. Of all the contact we've seen in that game, that didn't seem like the most egregious, but we're going to walk to the other end for free throws. Yeah, it looks like he went over his shoulder there. So at the line is Phillips. Broke his nose in a practice a couple of weeks ago. Didn't play in the game yesterday against Syracuse. Originally, the plan was to redshirt this freshman. And then some of the veteran players on Tennessee went to Rick Barnes and the coaching staff and said, we need this guy. He's good. He, is he can good. really help us. And so they called off the plan to redshirt. Yeah, he, Kate Phillips is going to be really good. He's got good skills. He can handle it. Sort of a connector out there. But his dad played football in Alabama. His mother played basketball for the time. I think an uncle and his grandfather also played football in Alabama. Smith to the corner. Lawyer with time. And around and out. And here come the balls in transition. The connect can grab a rebound and bring it up himself. Good fake. He might have the top shot fake in college basketball. Wouldn't you say this could be? Yeah, I think so. Remember Sam Young from Pittsburgh back in the day? Remember his shot fake? I do. Yeah. Yeah, that was one of the best yeah. we've seen. Just took a little bump there from Mason Gillis. Pick up the foul. And Tennessee needed something good to happen just to see the ball go through the net. Well, the shot fake last year was Sir Jabari Rice at, yes. at Texas. I mean, that, that's what conjured up Sam Young yeah, last right. year. His was the best in college basketball, the best you've seen in, in forever. Yeah. But, yeah, I think the, the mantle may have been passed to Santiago Vescovi this year. Knocks them both down. Tennessee back on top. Pressure on the ball has really forced Purdue further out on the floor. That makes passes longer. Hoffman Wren slipped a bit, and it's called a travel. Slippery on those flowers. <laughs> Watch his left foot just slips a little bit, turns over, and picked up the walk. But at least that's not a live ball turnover. Well, it was tied when Edie went to the bench with a second foul at the 417 mark. So in about three and a half minutes, it's only cost Purdue one point on the scoreboard at the moment. Coffin ran with a good rebound. He's given him some good minutes and good defense. He made Dalton connect go right through his chest. First inside won't go. And another Purdue foul. Somebody went over the back. Yeah, it's a little pushing and shoving going on underneath after that miss. First made a really good catch on that short roll. Just couldn't get the ball to go down. Yeah, maybe it was it was uh, Trey Coffin yeah, has gone over the top of yeah. Santiago Vescovi. And Purdue fans not liking the whistle right now. Vescovi back to the line. Whenever that happened, that's when the big guys would kind of look at the officials and go, hey, tell the guards to stay out of there if they don't like it. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I mean, it was a that's foul. That's right. <laughs> you want to come in here? You play by our rules. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so best could be a very good free throw shooter at the line. not for the faint of heart everything's difficult every catch you know there's not going to be anything clean in this game but every every Tennessee game is a very physical defensive yeah. minded battle right so, yeah and it's yeah. not like it's not like Purdue's not used to right. physicality and when I say clean what I mean is you're not going to be able to make a clean catch and and you know clean screening because everything's going to be contested timeout 28 seconds to go in the half 
Shot clock turned up, 28.5 to go. Purdue ball down by three. You say rivalry week, rivalry very well. week. Very well. That's, uh, that's, that's a Elmer, lot of practice. That's an Elmer Fudd special. <laughs> Jones trying to get it to Smith, and Ziegler won't let that pass happen. And they can't run any offense. Yeah. Look how far away they are from an operating area where they are good defensively. Over the top and a hold by Phillips. A good job by Trey Kaufman Wren to just move Phillips up the lane when he got on the high side. And just to keep that pass from going in, you just have to really heat up the ball. And Phillips getting some minutes because the other three bigs on Rick Barnes's roster all have at least two fouls. Toby Iwaka's got three. Well, Tennessee's got, we've talked about Purdue's depth and options. Tennessee's got the same thing, really. Then. Rick Barnes has a lot of bodies as well. A lot of big bodies yep. and big strong bodies. And as we said yesterday, everybody in orange, they know where the weight room is. They're not going to play any team in college basketball that they're not as strong as. Not one. 35 footer. Got a foul. Fletcher Lawyer is going to go to the line. Saniago Vescovi caught him on a push off. Say ball don't lie, but I think the ball occasionally lies. That was the right call. Yeah, that ball don't lie thing. Yeah. 1.3. And a very physical first half comes to a close in this big time matchup between number seven, Tennessee, and number two, Purdue. And only three players have scored. He said it's all about weathering the storm. They're getting good, good looks, taking great shots but missing free throws. He said we have to take advantage of what they're giving us and also defensively keep Dalton connect off the floor. He gave me a look and he said, because he's really good. He is really good. Just missed a, a shot he normally makes. And a guy who's been making a lot of shots today. Fletcher Lawyer knocks one down, Purdue on top. Well, the first possession of the second half looks similar to how Purdue came out in the second half against Gonzaga. Getting the ball down the floor quickly after a defensive rebound, passing ahead, getting an easy shot in transition. Mayshack floats it up, left it short, but draws the foul. Just a terrific pass by Braden Smith, the Fletcher Lawyer, and Lawyer ran the floor. They got that rebound. Zach Eady got the rebound, immediately outletted it, and you've got to beat this Tennessee defense down the floor in transition because grinding it out in the half court, five on five, is going to be really, really difficult. I mean, Matt Painter found it difficult in the first half, but does anything fluster Matt Painter? No. Well, Purdue's won more games in the Big Ten in the last seven years than any team in that league. He, he's just built a fabulous program in West Lafayette. And you can say the same thing about Rick Barnes and Knoxville. No team has won more regular season games or postseason games the last seven years of the SEC than the Balls. Purdue picked to win the Big Ten. Tennessee picked to win the SEC. Without question, these are two teams who could go a long, long way this year. Adu with a steal. Mayshack one-on-one -on -one with Jones and a block. What a great play by Jemai Meshack. Just knocked that ball away with the right hand. He's so active with his hands in addition to getting his body there. Now, he kept his body right in front and stopped the advance of Braden Smith. And Braden Smith is a heck of a guard. Like, he protects the ball and reached around with that right hand to knock it away to get that transition opportunity. My Meshack went to the same high school as Darren Collison at Awanda. Outstanding player. Jemai Meshack also was on the SEC Men's Basketball Leadership Council, which is a way for student athletes to talk to campus leaders and conference officials about student athlete wellness and experience. Uh, second year in a row he's been on that council, so a tip of the cap to him. He's obviously got great leadership qualities. He puts such good pressure on the ball. He's difficult to deal with defensively, and he's made it really hard on Braden Smith. Boy, tough to deal with Edie when he catches the ball that close to the rim. Yeah, if he gets both feet in the paint, that's basically a double bury. And Jonas Adu, there's nothing he could do. 
Meshack elevates around and out. Can't get a better look. I thought Kaufman Wren was going to get that ball to Lance Jones, and they were going to be off to the races. Smith. Kaufman Wren runs it down, puts it up, and hits. Tennessee's trying to keep Braden Smith from getting to those screens, just keeping on the side. Connect almost lost it. Adu from the corner. And the long rebound down and a bounce to Jones and a nice look ahead to Smith. Well, those look ahead, they're going to get opportunities. Ooh, Lawyer was thinking about it, wasn't he? He's, he's always yeah. thinking about it. He <laughs> should. Good physical battle. Kaufman ran over James. Edie with a weak side rebound. Go back up. And one. Much better pace in this second half. There's our guy again. Yeah. Same outfit as yesterday. I don't you're, you're surprised by that? <laughs> let's, let's hope he didn't sleep in that, that costume. But inside position, two guys behind him. There's nothing they could do. And Zach Eady was looking out to an open three-point shooter, but he was so close to the basket, he should have gone up right away. Jay, that is the seventh foul drawn by Zach Eady in this game. Adu just went to the bench with his third. Awaka, who's got three, has checked in in his place. I mean, how do you block that out? It's like blocking out the Washington Monument. He's Canadian. Could you say CN Tower, please? I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's a lot bigger than the Washington Monument. I've actually been in it. Yes. That's the one that's got the uh, plexiglass floor. The glass floor, on, yeah. That I was afraid to yeah. go on, even though I knew I wouldn't yeah. fall. Yeah. That's the glass floor that people braver than us walk on. Seven-point lead. So you don't walk on it either? No. Yeah. Well, what's the point? Yeah. I know I'm <laughs> high up, but why take the risk? Yeah. Boilermaker fans making some noise. Biggest lead of the game for Purdue. Well, Walker's working so hard. Worked hard on that ball screen to string it out and then got all the way back to Zach Eady. Good help there by Awaka. Smith needs some help. Shot clock's running down. And Kaufman Wren had it knocked away, and it's out of bounds to Tennessee. Good stand there by the Vols. Well, that's the difficulty. Trey Kaufman Wren operates better in the low post. When he goes up to that high low, that's where you'd rather have maybe Mason Gillis coming up there. Not only can he knock down that shot, but he's more of a playmaker in that spot. Tennessee looking for its first field goal of the second half, and they're not going to get it here as Lawyer picks the pocket of Connect. Oh, boy. A transition three. And a foul going against Purdue. Well, it's amazing how many of those steals that Purdue gets on that action because they're, they're in the gap. Now watch Fletcher Lawyer there. He's in the gap, just reaches in, and he can recover to the shooter. But his positioning essentially is his help. Reaches in with that right hand, knocks it away, and gets the steal. But he and Braden Smith, they do a very good job of their positioning in gaps. Kaufman ran his third foul. He's on the bench now. Mason Gillis has checked in. Awaka lost the handle, and Tennessee can't get anything going right now offensively. Well, I promise you that Awaka was thinking about, when I catch this, i got to deal with Edie. And that's why he didn't catch it. Rebound, Vescovy. Oh, and Smith tipped it away, and it hit the leg of Michael Greenstein, one of the officials. Officials are in play. Almost four minutes in, and Tennessee, again, still looking for their first field goal. The second half, they turned it over a couple of times as well. Here's a guy who could knock down some shots in Jordan Ganey, but he's been quiet today. The lawyer was right with him on the catch on that throwback. A walk up over Edie. How about that? You have to make some tough shots. Tobe Awaka had six points and six rebounds in the win that Tennessee had over Wisconsin. And he's never guarded anybody as big as Zach Eady. He also played on Team USA at the U-19 World Cup. Averaged a double-double. Got some great international experience over the summer. Boy, yes. 
For those that don't know, oh, you're boy. about to know. <laughs> I visited Canada with Dan, yes. and he gave me, took me to a great Canadian delicacy. He wanted me to experience Canada. He took me to Subway. I did. Yes, and uh, much to my dismay, he's been talking about it ever since. <laughs> you did pay, though. I did pay. And Heidi into the game with the ball. Guy who missed last year, red shirting because of injuries. That pass gets knocked away. Here come Ganey in the ball. Still looking to get the offense clicking in the second half. Outside of Edie and Fletcher Lawyer, there's been no scoring for Purdue. Ziegler the miss. The ball's still live. Ziegler got knocked down by his own teammate. Awaka hopefully okay as he gets help back to his feet. Remember, he's the guy who got knocked out of the game with the ankle roll yesterday. Purdue just saved that ball underneath, but well, that's an interesting call there because Edie was being held. And so Edie gets called for the foul for the contact with Awaka as Awaka then uh, banged into Ziegler, and you can see how Edie feels about that. He sat the last 4-17 of the first half after picking up his second, and now he's coming out relatively quickly in the second half. He's got a little bit of a quicker lineup on the floor. Connect into some heavy traffic, and it cost him. Great help again by Braden Smith. He, he went not just to, to be there position-wise. He went to steal the ball. Keeps the dribble alive under the basket. Finds Heidi. Well, you can't get an inch of free space offensively in this game. And then a foul. If it's a walk, it's just four. Yeah, that's a walk. And good job by Fletcher Lawyer to just go right into it. Instead of let, letting a walk a string out that ball screen action. Boy, and that's not the kind of foul if you're Rick Barnes. You want to see like a guy like a walk pick up when you're already in some foul trouble. Because now he's got to go deeper into his bench. Adu's got three. Awaka's got four. And now he has brought the freshman, J.P. Estrella, into the game. If they string out that ball screen... Fletcher Lawyer needs to just look back, throw back to Trey Kaufman Wren and play out of that. Lance Jones trying to turn the corner. Heidi trying to do the same, but Tennessee keeps shutting off these driving lanes. Well, their help defense has been excellent. Jones for three. And boy, did they get a big shot there. That extends the lead to eight. An ankle-breaking step back. Biggest lead of the game for the Boilermakers. You know, but to Matt Painter's point and what he said to Angel at halftime, they shot 20%. Edie had foul trouble. They missed 10 free throws. They were only down one at the half. He probably had to believe things would get better in the second half. Well, this is just a great individual move. A little crossover, step back. Completely on balance. For Lance Jones, a senior from Evanston, Illinois. He was an all-Missouri Valley Conference player at Southern Illinois and on the all-defensive team. We'll talk about a two-way player. He just adds a, another dimension of speed. Ganey no. Offensive rebound, Josiah Jordan James and a great look to Vescovy. Ziegler for three. Tennessee cannot make a shot right now. Estrella kept that ball alive. So if Tennessee could grab that offensive rebound get an extra possession. The ball's one for nine from the field in the second half. Jones turns on the Jets again, and it's out of bounds to the Vols. And Jones is saying, I didn't lose it. It got knocked away. But he lost he it. He lost it. <laughs> <laughs> Upon further review. <laughs> no harm in trying. That's so great. The ball pressure by Lawyer on Vescovy. And away from the ball, a call against Purdue. And Heidi was uh, holding. Well, while we have a moment, we've got a doozy of a second game coming up. Tyler Kolick, the reigning Big East player of the year, leading number four Marquette.
against Bill Selfs, Kansas Jayhawks. Hunter Dickinson seems to be settling in quite nicely as a Jayhawk, doesn't he? I would think so. He's averaging, what, 24, 25 points a game, 12 rebounds, shooting 70% from the field. He's also their top three-point shooter, shooting ooh, 60, 70% from three. Mason Gillis called for the foul as Jordan Ganey went flying. Gave him a little bump as he was trying to cut through with that shallow cut. And that is already the seventh team foul on Purdue with 12.57 left. Get away with that bumping and grinding in and around the basket and in the lane. But if you do it out front, you're doing it right in front of the official. Edie back in after sitting for just a couple of minutes. He's got three fouls, remember. Matt Painter trusts him not to pick up any cheap ones. Ethan Morton has checked in as well. He just played a couple of minutes in the first half. It's a deeper roster, and Morton, who was a, a starter for most of last season, he's seen himself in a smaller role so far this year. Well, he did a great job, I thought, yesterday against Gonzaga guarding Ryan Nembhard. He's a connector out there, really good passer, but a really smart defender. One of the better glue guys in the Big Ten. I knew you were going to say that. We're, we're obligated to say glue guy whenever we talk about Ethan Morton. Isn't that a good good yeah. thing? It is. You yeah. might want to try it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Edie a touch. Hasn't had all that many opportunities to get the ball on the block and put up the jump hook that he loves to put up so much. Estrella did a good job of pushing him off the lane. First, great patience, couldn't finish it. Edie had a hand on it. First goes flying, and it's out of bounds to Tennessee. They are going after it, both <laughs> first and Vescovy. Two tough-minded teams, and today's game reflecting that. I think that was a first down. Bring the chains out. <laughs> Tennessee has scored only six points so far in the second half, and now we got more bodies flying and another foul away from the ball, and this time it's Heidi. It's just on cuts there. Purdue just a little too physical on some of these cuts, and that wasn't a scoring cut. It was a cut that was going toward the corner, and I think, I think Heidi's probably saying, wait a minute, I was there. At this point, if you're Tennessee, right, you don't want to get into settle for jump shot mode because you can get to the free throw line over and over and over right now. Darn right. You want to put Purdue in a position because every common foul now is going to be free throws, and they're inching ever closer to the double bonus. And this is awfully early to be flirting with that. Ganey makes them both. His dad, Justin, an assistant coach on this team, and a terrific player in his day. In his day? In his day. <laughs> Which was <laughs> after you. That was after like your day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of the last time we had a possession where somebody wasn't lying down on the court or got knocked down to the court. It was yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Third on Estrella, four on Awaka, three on Adu. So the big guys for the Vols have some foul issues as well. And Edie is tied up. The possession arrow, though, will keep it with Purdue. Well, I thought Edie, rather than going into the middle, could have just given a little drop step mm -hmm. and got an angle with his over his left shoulder. Just drop step right here and you get to the rim. A good job by Josiah Jordan James to come over. He took a shot, but was able to tie it up.
Matt Painter making a different call right now to give a different alignment. And a foul on Vescovy. Well, the depth these two teams have may be tested today, Jay, because uh, inevitably pretty soon guys are going to start fouling out of this game. Switches by Tennessee. Hey. Jones into Edie for the slam. Boy, what a fake by Lance Jones. Edie's had to work very hard for his 17 points and 10 rebounds so far in this game. Wide open Ziegler. Boy, did they need that one, didn't they? Much better movement by Tennessee running Purdue off a variety of screens to get that open shot. Now, Tennessee going with full court pressure. Boy, that was a looked like a violation. It looked like Caleb first. His right foot was over that line making the pass. At least it was close. Pass deflected. First got it back. And is fouled on his way to the rim. And he hits the deck hard. And we'll be at the free throw line for a couple when we come back. Very, very physical here today. Purdue leading Tennessee by three. Purdue's. This is going to be their second and third free throws. So first will shoot the two for the flagrant, and then Purdue will retain possession. First a guy who can back up. Edie in the middle can play alongside Edie at the four as he makes one of two. Let's go cross court to Angel Gray. Guys, well, Coach Painter told his team what they will not do is complain about the calls, but what they can do is play physical without fouling. He said, guards, I'm challenging you to help our guys down low. We have to make sure that we're doing this together. He also added rebound, defend. Oh, yeah, and have fun. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's uh, as physical a battle as you'll ever have. Go out there and have fun. But that's, that's what happens a lot when you play Tennessee. You know you're in for this kind of a battle. And, Jay, I would think it wears on you mentally as well as physically. It definitely yeah. wears on you mentally as well as physically, but that's like saying have fun in the octagon <laughs> When you're going into an MMA fight They do have a four-point lead They're not getting the ball into Edie as easily or as often as they would like in a, in a quote-unquote normal Purdue game It feels like he's getting touches on the block, you know 50% of the time, half their possessions may be more. That's just not happening today. Well, Purdue's putting pressure on the ball. Excuse me, uh, Tennessee's putting pressure on the ball, making it difficult for Purdue's passers to see inside to Edie. That play will work over the top, and he's now got 19. Well, you got to make Zach Edie play in a crowd. He's had a crowd around him all game long, but not there. That was just a simple little back screen and got him right to the rim. The last place you want him hanging around. Vescovy, a kick into the corner. Tipped up, no good after the miss by Ziegler, and it's Purdue ball. What a beautiful fade screen by Estrella on the ball reversal. A wide open shot for Tennessee. Couldn't have been run any better, just didn't make it. Smith still scoreless in this game, and he's been in double figures with regularity for Purdue. And right on cue, he's got his first points of the game. Really nice job by Zach Eady. Runs out to set the screen, then twists it and sets it again. A little screen and rescreen. Let's take a look at our good hands play brought to you by Allstate. Well, just a little back screen, no communication from Santiago Vescovi to get in front of Eady. He sets the back screen on Estrella. And you have to expect that Zach Eady's only going one place, and that is to the rim. He's not running out to the three-point line. <laughs> Does he amuse you or frighten you? Both. That's that's right. I'm frighteningly yeah. amused. Vescovy at the line after the foul on Morton. Knocks down the, the front end of the one-and-one. One. It's like watching penalty kicks in soccer. A free throw fest this game. That is the 52nd free throw attempted in this game. And there's still 10 minutes to go in regulation. Oh, 
right now. Braden Smith, he's got to think about Zakai Ziegler guarding him. And look, look how the catch has been extended so far outside the three point line. That's out of an operating area. Vescovy just took it away from Colvin. He's got Ganey with him. And good recovery by Lawyer to turn a two on one into a two on two. Adu left hand. Great rebound. offensive rebound by James. What a pass. Ganey from the corner. And off the foot of Colvin out of bounds. And Miles Colvin, just a freshman from Indianapolis. Had some really good moments against Gonzaga. Hit a couple big shots, but this is as physical a contest as he's ever been in in his basketball life. Won't be the last, but it's just the first. Ganey again. Fouled on a three-point attempt. The foul on Colvin. A nice little fade screen to get Ganey to the corner. Ganey's so good. Just a little fade screen by Adu. And got Kane, and you've got to take away middle right there. And angle your defense to take away that pass. You want to get it to go to the short side of the floor. But Ganey does such a good job on the catch. He doesn't dip the ball. And a lot of good shooters do bring it down. They dip it a little bit to get their rhythm. But he catches it and gets it right up into a shooting pocket. Ganey first team all big south last year at USC Upstate. 15 points per game. Good shooter. As now Connect has returned. We haven't called his name. Haven't seen him all that much here in the second half after he got off to a very quick start. And if Rick Barnes is looking for offense, that's one of his best options. Right now, inbounding the ball has become difficult. Yeah. An interception by Ziegler. Ganey steps in. And the rebound to Lawyer. Purdue's going to have to get other players than Braden Smith coming back to the ball and present themselves as receivers. Lawyer. And if that's got Edie, Edie, it's number four. Well, he's thinking he went straight up. But he's pretty easy to see. Well, that's a big call in this game. It looked like he was okay on the way up. Maybe it's the arms coming down on the head of Adu on the way down. But either way, it's number four. And that means he's going to come out of the game. Pop and Wren's getting ready to come in. Yeah, that's a tough one. So he sat the last 4-17 in the first half when he picked up his second. He sat a couple of minutes early in the second when he's picked up his third. And now he's going to the bench again with nine minutes to go. Matt Painter may decide to go a little bit smaller and try to get a little bit more movement to be able to have an open floor. They're going with a little horn set out top, and Vescovy just ran over the screen. But with Zach Eady out of there, it does open up the middle a little bit more. And Purdue, with cuts, drives, should be able to attack a little bit more and take advantage of the overplay. Clean screen by Kaufman Wren. The foul on Vescovy, his third, sixth team foul. The screening, Kaufman Red. Now they'll try to back pick. Good rebound. Wow. For, yeah, but then he lost it. Got it. Yep. But it's out of bounds. Back to Purdue. Well, if you get the ball, you better wrap it up with all you've got because whatever team you're playing for, the other guys are coming after it. They are coming. That's exactly right. It's almost like a defensive back trying to punch it out of a ball carrier's hands in football. There's a Kai Ziegler. He's playing more minutes in this one. He has made everything difficult for Braden Smith. Everything. Inside Kaufman Wren. Adu the rebound. Adu caused him to change it. Had to arc it a little bit more because of Jonas Adu's presence there. Remember, 
win or lose, both of these teams play again tomorrow. Lance Jones called for the reach-in foul. Great curl of that screen over on the field. And everybody's uh, hearts and thoughts are with the people of Maui as the healing and the recovery begins. And as Jay mentioned, it will take a while. And if this tournament, although it's being played here on Oahu and Honolulu, if it can even bring a small bit uh, of relief or joy or distraction to the people in Maui, uh, that would be a wonderful thing. And again, everybody hoping and praying that the tournament is back in Maui next year. Tennessee is 2 of 14 from the field in the second half. 2 of 14. And but down by one. And down by yeah. one. What's keeping them there is the foul line. Smith misses the jumper. The rebound down to Zakai Ziegler. No clean looks at all for Purdue. And that was... That shot was taken without a pass, and that's not Purdue basketball. Offensive foul. He's using that off arm with the left hand dribble, the right arm went out. Boyer was trailing him, he didn't need to do that. But we've gone 30 seconds without a whistle, so. Yeah, there wasn't much there, but. Number four on Vescovy. Dalton Connect, by the way, Jay, as Vescovy sits, Connect has not scored in the second half. He is their leading scorer, has been in every game so far this year, had 13 in the first half, has yet to score in the second. Well, he's guarding Fletcher Lawyer right now. Hoffman Wren spins, puts it up, doesn't get it, first has it, and out of bounds, Purdue ball. And Caleb First is really working hard on the offensive glass to get that inside position. He always goes after the ball with two hands. And again, Edie on the bench with four fouls. Went out at the nine-minute mark. Edie and Kaufman Wren with four for Purdue. Awaka and Vescovy with four for Tennessee. And Purdue's going to that high ball screen action because it's been so difficult for Purdue to make any passes. They can't even get the ball inbounds. You know, Tennessee doing a great job of switching those screens. Yeah, they've gotten to four and a half out of five on a lot of these inbounds plays. Another tough catch. Kaufman ran from first. A beautiful pass. And then Jordan Ganey kind of sold out there on the high side to try to take that ball away on the post up. What a what a great drive. Beautiful. Ziegler with his second field goal of the game, and again, it's a one-point game. What a difference he makes. Lawyer, left hand, finishes. Yeah, that quick attack is so helpful to Purdue. They don't have to grind it out. Connect to miss. Loose ball and a foul call. Adu, Jonas Adu took a swipe right over the top. Number four on him. I think some of the players are looking around like, wait a minute, this wasn't called in the first half. But they are fouls. And a swipe the side of Kaufman Wren's head, trying to tip it back out. So Trey Kaufman Wren at the line. We still have a long way to go. This has been a battle of attrition. Adu's going to sit, and Awaka, who's also got four fouls, is going to come back in. Awaka has not had a chance to play all that much today because of the foul trouble. He's only been in there for ten minutes. How many yeah, four? He's got four. Three balls and two Boilermakers have four fouls. Five-point lead, Purdue. Inside to Awaka. Creates some space and banks it home. They did such a great job of keeping Trey Kaufman Wren on his back. Got wide. Trey Kaufman Wren just couldn't get around him. Good ball pressure again by Ziegler. Diving for it. Lawyer comes up with it. And a foul. Jordan Ganey. Well, what a great play by Fletcher Lawyer to dive on that ball and get it. This tremendous defense by Zakai Ziegler. You think he would have made a difference in the NCAA oh, yeah. tournament last year for Tennessee? Got beat by Florida Atlantic after taking Duke down in the second round. And Lawyer and Ziegler having a couple of words. Smith knocks down the front end. 
And Fletcher lawyer telling the officials, hey, you know, they need to wipe this up. I was down on the deck, and people have been sweating a little bit in this game. Young man, this is your moment. Make the most of it. A lot comes from this kind of thing, you think? <laughs> Resume builder? Yes. <laughs> America just watched him at work. <laughs> I think he handled himself beautifully. I think he did a wonderful yeah. job. Yeah. What if he's ever done color commentary? I was wondering play by play. <laughs> Ziegler, a little hesitation, can't get a shot off. Good help by Caleb first. Heavy traffic, a walk of the follow, kept it alive, and it's out of bounds off the knee of Trey Kaufman Wren, so it's still Tennessee's. Nothing is easy. That, that ball goes up on the rim, and that's when the real fight begins. Second game in as many days, and again, win or lose, they both play tomorrow, either for third place or for a championship with Kansas and Marquette still to come tonight here on ESPN. Is the three knockdown rule in effect in this game? Well, obviously not. <laughs> because we've had more than that here today. You think we could call the rest of the game using only football terminology? We probably yeah. could. <laughs> Tennessee get connect going. He's their best scorer. Ganey with a pretty good look. And it's a two-point game. Well, he had to go underneath because Dalton connects. Came at the angle to make it difficult to stay with Ganey. Awaka switches on to Smith. Smith gets by him. Hoffman Wren comes down with it. No reset of the shot clock. Didn't hit the rim. Jones can't get into the paint. Lawyer, the foul, and the basket. What a great play and tough play by Fletcher Lawyer. And he knew there was going to be a reach. And as soon as he went right up with it and kept his concentration, watch how his eyes never leave the rim there until he let go of the ball. Even then, he watched it go through. And Zach Eady, loving it. Right by Sushi for Fletcher Lawyer tonight. <laughs> what a game for Lawyer, searching for his 25th point. <laughs> Lawyer and Edie have 44 of Purdue's 61 points. James misses the three. Wow. Jones had it taken away by Iwaka. What a play. That's unbelievable. And Jones pulled that ball down, and Iwaka just put both hands in there and took it away. He's just a sophomore. He is getting better and better. Remember the name, Tobey Iwaka. Vice grip hands. You got to throw back out of that, but he does have a, a mismatch here. Ooh, that's a tough pass and a lot of heavy traffic. Lance Jones pulls down a great rebound here, and Waka just took it right away from him. Averaged a double-double on their summer trip to Italy. Averaged a double-double for Team USA at the U-19 World Cup. He is a terrific player. Ganey gets a very good look, and this game is tied. He also got a very good screen and came off firing. He was turning to the basket as that ball arrived. 12 for Ganey, all of them here in the second half. Four minutes to go. Matt Painter getting Zach Eady up off the bench to come back in the game. It was just tough to hand the ball off. Well, blowing up every dribble handoff. Hoffman ran. And a foul on the floor on Awaka, and that is his fifth. Tobey Awaka has just fouled out of the game. And half. Tennessee just 32%. But the difference is Purdue turned the ball over 15 times in this game. And that's really going to be the issue 
for Purdue all season long. If they can keep turnovers around 10, 12, they get so many extra possessions off the offensive glass. And that's going to put them in a in position to win most every game they're in. Zach Eady checks back in. He sat for five minutes and 16 seconds. He went out at the nine-minute mark with Purdue leading by three. He's back in now with Purdue leading by one. Ooh, Ziegler with an errant pass. Lawyer the steal, and he calls a timeout. What a great play by Fletcher Lawyer. He is having against Nebraska. Edie, despite sitting for a few stretches because of foul trouble, has 19 points and 10 rebounds in this game. And it's Purdue with a one-point lead. Trying to get to an angle where they can throw it into Edie. Adu doing the best he can, but Edie scores. It's so hard to keep him away from that left shoulder. He just pulled his way into the middle of the lane to get that little fadeaway jump hook to go down. Ganey hit the last one, hits another one, and it's tied again. Jordan Ganey is a baller, man. He did not play well against Syracuse, but he shoots it so effortlessly from deep. 15 all in the second half for Jordan Ganey. Big minutes for Zakai Ziegler. Trying to make life as difficult as he can for Braden Smith. Oh, he can go right over the top. Look at, look at Tennessee just loading up the lane on Zach Eady. He'll get it off. No, he'll pass it to first. Tipped out to Smith and a fresh possession. We got Eady all over the left shoulder of Edie. If they got Adu, then he is gone. That would be number five on him. Remember, Toby Awaka has already fouled out. If it is Adu, Rick Barnes is going to have to go deeper into his bench and bring in one of the freshmen, either Estrella or Phillips, unless he goes small. Yeah, it's easy to say, but this is where Adu needed to just break contact right there and get to the other side. Hard to break contact on 7-4, close to 300 pounds. And Rick Barnes has chosen experience over size. Jemai Meshack is into the game. And that means, in all likelihood, Josiah Jordan James at 6-6 is going to be covering Zach Eady at 7-4. Well, you really need to use leverage. When you're smaller, just play lower and get into Zach Eady's legs. Meshack can drop down and help out. And right now, it's going to be important for the other players on the floor around Edie to move and make themselves available. Somebody lost a shoe there. It's right on the three-point line. And now it got thrown onto the bench. It's Ganey who does not have his left shoe on. Kinect lost it. Meshack has it. Ziegler for three. Meshack, the offensive rebound. Ganey still playing without a shoe. Connect misses a three. And a foul going against Tennessee. Good block out by Fletcher Lawyer on Jemai Meshack. He had to come over the top of him. Now Lawyer, who's an excellent shooter, steps to the foul line. He missed one of the two that he took to end the half on that Vescovy foul. I'm not sure there's anybody you'd rather have on the line than Fletcher Lawyer. Eight of nine from the line today. It's so nice for Matt Painter to have his starting guards, Smith and Lawyer, be such good free throw shooters. Painter going with the undershirt. <laughs> Two big free throws and a three-point lead. Nice right lawyer ties his career high. And right now, this is about getting pressure on the shot and then rebounding it. Ganey a miss. Smith a rebound. And Smith sticks his nose in there and rebounds. He's the, all five guys have to get him defensive glass. And Braden Smith went right in there. First has to come out top to get a touch. Mayshack on Edie. That's going to be an off. Oh, boy, that could have been an offensive foul. But Mayshack was trying to front him, staying low, getting in, getting into his legs. It's really hard for a big guy to deal with this, but 
Edie just at the Oof. end. I guess they called that yeah. foul first, yeah. but the second foul would have been on Edie. So Edie, who missed his first six free throws today, including the one he just made, has now gone nine for his last ten. Started 0 for 6, 9 of 10 since. He is eyeing that rim. Yeah, he doesn't. He'll just take his eyes off it for a split second just to catch the ball when it's bounced to him. Quick look down and then right back to the rim. Does it every time. Rattles out. We got to run something for Dalton Connect to, to get a shot here. Ganey. Not this time. And Lawyer comes down for the rebound. Well, the Purdue guards have really done a good job of coming down to rebound and help out Caleb first and Zach Eady. Lawyer's got five, Smith's got four. Boy, Ziegler's just all over Smith. <laughs> Can't get rid of him. And Smith scores anyways. What a huge bucket. That is one tough cookie right there, Braden Smith. Time is of the essence right now for Tennessee. Mayshack short. Jones the rebound. They got a foul. They need a foul. Yeah. Seconds are ticking away. Ziegler looked to the bench right now, and it looks like at this point they're going to play it out. I don't get this one. There's the foul. foul there, but after 23 seconds came off the clock. You can't do that, says Rick Barnes. If you run it down that far, you got to play out the rest of the possession. Now for the play of the game, driven by Continental Tires. Braden Smith that is a big time drive off the high ball screen. Just got around Zakai Ziegler. Player is difficult to get around. And just kissed it off the glass. He's made some big plays, those defensive rebounds. That bucket. When Purdue hasn't played its best, neither team played its best in large measure because this became a fist fight. Boy, missed them both. Need a three at this point, you would think. Connect gets it off. And hits wow. his first points of the second half. And it's a one possession. Uh, there's going to be face guarding, and, and Braden Smith is all the way to half court. He's going to get, get a couple screens, try to free himself up. And the foul will send Jones to the line. Jones on this young season shooting 60% from the foul line. Has not been to the line in this game. Uh, the free throw line has really let Purdue down in this one. Not just the early misses, but Braden Smith missing those two. Yeah, they're at 64 percent as a team today. 28 for 44. Good. They are not making this easy on themselves. Well, it's been a while since Tennessee's given up over 40 free throws in regulation. We'll have to go back a ways for that. That's a lot of margin there in that 17 free throws missed. Made the second four-point game. Right now, you just want to get up and slow the advance if you can. Into James. And a timeout called by Ganey with 9.5 to go. 0.5 seconds to go. Really tough for Zakai Ziegler to inbound this over a big guy. Ziegler gets it back, gets it off, and that might have been deflected by Morton. It's down to Smith. They'll foul him, and now Purdue is almost home and cooled out with just 2.9 to go. What a great defensive play by Ethan Morton. We talked about him, the job he did on Ryan Nemhard against Gonzaga, and then he blocks the last shot there by Zakai Ziegler. Ziegler much smaller, but just got a piece of that. <laughs> He's got to be tired, too. He's done a lot of flexing. He has. Boy, oh, boy. Smith misses the first. Missed them both. Missed four straight to end the game. 
It won't matter as Purdue wins this physical battle 71 to.